What did you think in Spain when you realized dating a German person that it's getting serious? I just thought that this is totally crazy, insane and most of the time what the hell is happening to me? Is it really happening to me? This thing that is like out of a movie and uh, oh, it's, it, it was an insane experience. It is still an insane experience for me. Uh, and have you ever dated somebody from another country or per accident um, have you married somebody from another country? Maybe you are raising um, children in bilingual family and multicultural family. Today we'll talk about that. So, obviously, it all starts with dating. Yeah. What did you think about dating? The dating was... The dating part is always very nice, no? And it was... Uh, <laughs> it was nice as well. And it wasn't very different from what I've experienced of dating before. And I guess of the concept of dating in general it was... It was exciting. Yeah. In a different country, f with a person from a totally different country yeah we speak uh, just our mother tongues are german and russian but we spoke mostly english but we also tried to speak a lot of spanish to improve it because we're yeah. in spain and in the process of learning spanish so what do you think did, was the cultural barrier somewhere or difficulties in understanding i also think that the situation we had was helping us with yeah the different languages we were in a different culture so we were more open yeah. and open so to really really learn something new and to understand other one even more yes and uh, the language uh, helped us because we were teaching each other spanish yeah. and doing that we got to know each other more and yeah. we learned things about our uh, each other and about and that different cultures and you know there's sometimes there's such, such, such a moment when you're not sure what to say and how to behave and languages were always coming there to help you know you can yes. always teach each other a word expression from um, <laughs> a new language to share some experiences that are unfamiliar and unknown for one another a lot but i should say that at one point for me for sure it was the the moment when i really thought that it's not going to, to work out. Not because of the language or other barriers, but it was just too crazy. And I thought, what the hell are you doing? How, how will you keep that on? You're living so many kilometers from each other and you're both students. How are you going to meet? How are you going to manage it? You have this visa and documents and barriers and you cannot just move and, you know, keep keep dating a bit more to understand uh, if that's really your person not your person and I at one point I really thought it will stay this Erasmus boyfriend girlfriend relationship for us as well there there was one thing that was interesting in our relationship and I guess it's cultural the concept of time we were in Spain so we were in the south of Spain and we were kind of okay with quite some people not following the timetables uh, so strictly uh, but also in, I don't know, countries, it's difficult again to talk about the whole countries, but I think in general you're more punctual than I am. Yeah. So I you're think so waiting too. me more, I'm sometimes <laughs> um, late 5, 10, 15 minutes. Though I, I'm always trying to be punctual. Yeah, that's a really interesting concept. And I really think, although we are only from our part of the country, in your case, a gigantic country. Um, the concept in the country is mostly a little bit comparable. Yeah. For example, in the Netherlands, they have they are a little bit less punctual, on average at least, than the people I met from Germany, and the Russians are a little bit uh, that, that, more open with yeah. time. More open with time. That's good. <laughs> and the Spanish people, depending on the Spanish person, they don't know what time is. <laughs> People often ask us, how do you deal with some cultural references? You grew up in two different countries and meaning even in two different worlds a bit with different cartoons, different movies, different music um, and you did the different stuff when you were uh, a child. But it's totally true. Yeah, there are a lot of differences. But first I have to say, this is always when you have two people a little bit. No matter if you yeah. live in the next city, you 
can per accident listen to different music, watch different movies. Yeah, we had a lot in common anyway. Yeah, we have so a lot of common. That's really good. <laughs> and um, it's really many times like, oh, but you know this song. He cannot understand the the song, the Russian song that you like, and the songs that were important for you when you were growing up and were a teenager. But come on, we already grew up in more or less international world, so we listen to all the Disney same songs, songs. <laughs> the Disney songs. And even though I watched the Disney movies in Russian, obviously when I was a child, and he watched them in German. Uh, uh, we still know the English version and the English song, for example, from The Lion King. We can still uh, sing yes. the song together in the car. And we even showed each other the Russian version, the German version and compared them. And with, now with songs from um, international movies that are translated into different languages, we just know three versions. Yeah, that's Three versions are better than one, no? And as soon as you reach a certain level, you can even start to improve the language with the songs That's yeah really cool. and sometimes it's difficult really difficult because people ask me have you have you explained him this special movie that all russians watch before new year for <laughs> example um and the movie is called um ironia судьбы или с легким паром in russian and uh, it's a soviet time movie and everybody knows it here and everybody watches that on the 31st of december and for sure it's something special so everybody asks me have you explained that have you watched it I haven't found actually a good translation of that movie, so maybe if you know where we can watch it in English, that would be nice. And uh, there are some cultural references there that are just impossible to explain <laughs> for me. But anyway, we had a lot of laugh when I was just explaining that, yeah, there were friends who went to the sauna and they got drunk and then one person decided to, uh, one person was flying to his home, but then another person got into the plane instead of him and he got into another city in the New Year Eve because he was drunk, he did not realize it. And then the love story happened. That sounds like insane movie, no? Yeah, I'm happy that I watched it at least in Russian, so I have the pictures. But yeah. uh, without your explanation, I wouldn't have understood it. Yeah. And another example where the difference is in uh, childhood. So, for example, in Germany, when I grew up, there were already a lot of toys around. But here in Russia, you told me there were not uh, so many toys. No. Here it was different and we didn't get a lot of colorful toys and also colorful sweets and chocolate. So I grew up at least in my very young age in a different situation than you are. And sometimes you ask me, oh, do you know uh, this sweet? I, it, I had it, the favorite one as a child. I was like, no, I even never heard about it. We also grew up reading and listening to different fairy tales and uh, that's quite extreme, but it's interesting again to get to know those uh, differences. Yeah, we can start with the simple one. You don't know Benjamin Blümchen. Yeah, I got the CD as a Christmas present last year <laughs> to listen to some fairy tales. I never heard about that before. Yeah, those are children's stories from an elephant that's walking on two legs and has a lot of adventures with his human little boy friend. That sounds like an interesting one. Uh, I, I think I still will experience that when uh, my level of German is a bit higher to I think listen now to your the fairy level tales. Is enough. Yeah, maybe it's already m Go much more it. than last Christmas, so I can try it. Yeah. Um, and I also, for my last Christmas, got a present. This uh, book with the children's stories that I suppose everybody in Germany um, knows. But the stories were, guys, they were so insane for me. I never heard about something like this uh, for children in Russia. What was the name of the story, for example? So one story is, for example, Struffelpeter, where he gnaws on his fingers and his mom says to him, uh, if you continue doing this, we will ask the tailor to cut them off. And he continues doing it. and. Then the tailor comes with the big scissors and, and cut these fingers off. And there in the story, you, can, you will see the, the small picture of this boy standing like this, fingers cut, and the blood just splashes out of his fingers. Uh, drops falling down. But splashes, <laughs> drops falling down. This is quite cruel. Yes, and there was another one where there was the girl who was said, don't come out uh, at the street, it's uh, very strong rain, and don't take umbrella. And she took umbrella, and the wind just threw her away, and nobody saw her again. Yes. 
Wow. Mm. Or Max and Moritz, who make tricks on people, and in the end, uh, they go in a mill and are made to corn, and then they are fed to chickens. Wow. Yeah. Have I read already this one? I don't remember. Maybe it's uh, still <laughs> to come. There was one more, the insane one about the eating soup. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the guy was uh, not wanting to eat the soup. I mean, the small ball boy, he was like, I don't want the soup. I don't want the soup. Yeah, the soup, Kasper. Yeah, and the, the, then he was not eating the soup and he became slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And then you just see the, the, the gravestone at the end with rip written on it. And yeah. he died because of not eating soup. So I, eat your soup, my dear. I understand that it's really good for... Um, a child to understand that you should rip your uh, soup, you should not um, gnaw on your nails, you should not go outside when you're not supposed to go outside. But this is quite a cruel way of explaining this. It's Though, quite brutal. As a grown-up, I, I really enjoyed those stories. <laughs> Tell me, what was the first reaction when you told your family and your friends that you're going to marry a Russian girl? I did not tell it everybody at the same time. Yeah. I just went slowly with it and first I talked with friends about the idea to marry my What girlfriend. was the reaction? And it, from my friends it was of course always very nice and friendly to um, say when you thought good about it then do it and I was asking myself is it too extreme? Is it too fast? <laughs> Because in Germany it's not so common after approximately a year to marry yeah. and uh, that's quite a big difference and no? that's quite early as well you're now 27 but married it was half a year ago 26 yeah. age um, and I understand and I also I know that in Germany it's not really uh, common to marry at this age and nobody of your friends has married so far and uh, and you're the first one And just in general, to marry before 30 is a strange thing a bit. And First one. <laughs> <laughs> and people here also understand that in your country it's not so um, usual and normal. So here everybody were asking me, oh, but what was the reaction of his friends and his relatives? Because we know that this is so um, not usual. And Yeah, it was, it was quite intense. For example, I'm telling my family, <coughs> it was really... Are you sure? Isn't it a bit early? And uh, all, all, always this uh, hesitation and uh, all the questions like, are you sure? Really sure? Did you think good about it? Oh my and god, I that was a difficult part actually. We, we would talk a lot and we would tell each yeah. other everything. And when he told me about people asking him all the time, are you sure? Are you sure? It was not the easiest yeah. part to accept, but I got that people uh, also just, just this is unusual for them. Yeah, it's so different. Because how was it for you? For me, it was it was different because here it's okay to marry in early twenties. There are even some people marrying before they are twenty. Uh, far less, I would say, that in the in the past than in the past. But st still, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Most of the people are married till they are thirty. Uh, not most, also not good to say most, I cannot speak about the most of the people, but, but it's quite okay. And uh, some of my friends are already married and a lot of the friends of the friends are married. I'm 25 by the way. And uh, there are some people, some friends of mine and friends of the friends who already have children. And that's also considered as a very normal thing and really pro appropriate in time. Um, and you know, there's always the grandma thing when she will ask you, I have two grandmas and they always ask me or asked me before, when are you going to marry? You're already 23, 24, 25. Um, when are you going to marry? Um, or it's also quite common that the friends or the relatives of your family will ask you something like, oh, and uh, when there will be the grandchildren for the, the grandma and granddad? <laughs> Uh, and it's not that common of a question for you to hear. No, because we marry 
on average later mostly yeah and then also the question about children comes yeah. later so here everybody were already uh, anticipating and waiting the marriage and grandchildren um sadly it's not not sadly um maybe it's for the best for somebody and for the body for somebody sadly anyway um the life is changing and people are different and they decide on different things and also just meeting somebody is different and yeah, difficult and you, sometimes and you should not take this uh, decision uh, too light you should think about it and yeah. make your mind up not go to las vegas just to marry somebody maybe for somebody it's really the fate why not i don't know it's possible <laughs> it's possible and uh, um the only thing that was a question here is like, are you sure this is the person from another country it's not so often hear that you hear about people marrying foreigners i would say um, at least in my uh, circle of friends and people yeah. i know acquaintances i think in europe it's a little bit more common because yeah. you have erasmus and the you have the freer and border there and yeah. here i need a visa and you need a visa to come to visit me for example um, yeah let's not talk too much about visa <laughs> <laughs> no not not this time at least and I just don't think that it's for sure that you will meet somebody who is really and um, your soul and destiny just living next door. It's also possible that you will find somebody living next door in your city, in your country. But the chance is big that you also is a soulmate of somebody from another part of the world because our world is such a big place. Why not to think that somebody for you is living thousand kilometers away? Yeah, I think you have to be ready to meet somebody and the other one has also be ready to meet yeah. somebody and then you also have to be at the same moment, at, at the, the same, same place. place and time, both ready and you should coincide like this there. Yeah. And it's, it's a difficult one, so I just, I really think that it's not that you are the only person uh, to be with the, this exact person. There are probably more soulmates and halves in this world than just you and me. Maybe there is somebody else that will see you too. But to meet this somebody else who can live wherever and uh, really to coincide in time and space. The chance is very slim. The chance is very slim. So and you have to grab it. <laughs> so when you no matter which country, just take the chance <laughs> so when you manage to grab somebody hold fast hold fast and <laughs> don't let the person go and another question is bureaucracy and documents to move yeah. in together to live together to travel to visit each other everything becomes difficult yeah we call it lovely the document hell the document hell and when it's just when you're from the two countries like Germany and Russia where the bureaucratic systems are not the easiest in the world then yeah. it becomes really difficult because we decided that we want to have one family name so um, I decided to have the same name as he has and I needed to change all my documents in Russia and it took quite some long time I am still and surprised how much time it was a lot of work and not everything just worked smoothly from the first time for example my uh, bank cards <laughs> and my uh, passport they were made uh, twice because from the first time something was not correct yeah it's difficult when you have the Karelian alphabet and then the normal mm. Latin letters and normal Latin yeah for letters. me normal Latin letters and, and then the bureaucracy with the yeah. Karelian alphabet has to write also the good Latin letters then it's difficult it's difficult and it's so amazing when a relative or a friend of the family tells a joke and you sit there and you have to translate it and it uses very special words maybe some older words that you only know approximately according to your gut feeling you know what they mean yeah. and then they look at you and tell go and translate this yeah why are you not translating <laughs> that why are you sitting there silent and, and you sit there like, like uh, i cannot <laughs> translate it and, and then you explain something like okay this was a joke it's very funny when you understand all words it's about this and that and I know when I say it like this, it's, it's, not, it's not funny, funny anymore. You cannot <laughs> laugh, but just accept it was a joke. Uh, I like this metaphor that explaining a joke is just like dissecting a frog. Uh, so you got to know what is inside. You get to know the joke, but the frog dies at the end. Yeah, so the joke so the dies joke. at the end. 
Many times said. And uh, sometimes I, I, I hope you all you are okay with that, but I have no other choice. I just say it was a joke. It was with a play of words. I cannot really translate and explain. You just accept that it was a joke, and let's leave uh, further. I think after some time you just accept it. Yeah, you're, you're okay with that. Yeah, I know you will not. Under, uh, you will not translate everything. Uh, that's okay. And maybe everybody will laugh, and I will sit there like. <laughs> yeah, I also many times like, okay, that was probably a joke because people are laughing. I didn't get it, but... The good thing about laughing is it's infecting. So many times you just laugh with and nobody <laughs> notices that you understood nothing. <laughs> and I always have this tiny, tiny light of hope inside of me. Hmm, one day the time will come when you will understand everything and you will laugh with everybody. Yeah, I also have that hope. And many times it's a big one. I know that for many families it's a big problem. How to celebrate New Year? Because when even your families, the family of your husband, the family of your wife, they live far away. The New Year is a big holiday here in Russia and it's a family holiday. And you're like, okay, let's celebrate this year with your family and then next year with my family. Yeah, but not why, why not this year with my family, you know? And there are quite some quarrels about that. And we don't have it. No, we are we lucky are really not lucky. to have it. I, first, it was difficult to understand for me, but we are really lucky because we have Christmas at 24th of December and you have New Year really yeah. big. 31st, so as everybody. And then we can really manage to celebrate Christmas at your home uh, and with all traditions and everything uh, with your yeah. family and still keep it really a family reunion day. And hopefully we can also manage then to fly to Russia and celebrate the new year with my family and meet with some of my friends. And then everybody is happy. Yeah, let's hope that we can manage it most of the year. Let's hope. We understand that for somebody marrying would be more difficult than it was for us because there are religious people in this world and they have different traditions and uh, the family want to marry uh, in the church or in the other religious building with special traditions. But was it a problem for us? No, we are so lucky. <laughs> we believe in universe. The universe is universal. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, this is our main religion and I think that's really a good thing because we didn't have a problem with yeah. choosing this priest, that priest, uh, what church to, to yeah, use for that celebration. Here we have the Orthodox Church yeah. and in Germany we have Catholic or Protestant. Yeah. So it was really good for us. We can count ourselves as lucky that we did not have this complexity added. So if you still ask yourself, uh, should you have in mind that it's possible to date a person from another country, uh, speaking another language or uh, marry one, uh, we can just say that it's possible, stay open and maybe you are lucky and uh, there will be not a lot of barriers and you will even enjoy those tiny things that uh, come in between that are a bit cultural or language related. I would even say stay for sure open and just enjoy the journey and um, you don't know maybe it's the guy or the girl next door or maybe the guy or the girl from the other side of the globe yeah just uh, enjoy your life and uh, you will see later what happens